I'm working on my rear skid plate. Um, there's the hitch. I've got to weld that in a little bit more. But when I had this mocked up, the motor was on each side of this. It was only about a quarter inch. So I wanted to gain a little extra space. This was originally made for a, a Vortec four cylinder. So what I decided to do was notch about a half an inch out of the side of the tube. And this side, I've already started to fill it in. I'll do the same thing for the part that connects to the chassis. So I'll just put an eighth plate in there to fill it back in. Let it go back in there. But it should be strong enough. This hitch is not going to hold anything crazy. So I don't think I'm going to be losing too much strength by doing that. But I just wanted more clearance for the motor. So that's why I'm doing it. All right, I got the frame rails clearanced out for the engine now. You can see it took about a half an inch out of the pipe. Also, the one that comes out of the frame horn tube. So now I've got clearance for the motor. So I'm good, I'm happy with it, and everything's lined up good. So anyway, it was a lot of work, but it was just too tight for the motor. I had only had about an eighth to a quarter inch clearance all the way around it, so now I should have more. I really want to redesign these bars completely and move them completely out further, but this will work for now, I think. Um, I should, like I say, I should have plenty of clearance now. All right, here's the cup holder I've got. It's pretty, it's a large one. I've got an offset screw in there. It's a quarter twenty screw, and that white is a piece of aluminum that I cut out. So I'll show you how it all goes together. All right, that's inside the cup. It's got a quarter twenty connection at the bottom that it screws into. On the outside, I just supported it with a ring that goes around it. There's a ridge in the cup right there, so that holds it in nice and tight so it won't move at all. That's clearance for the shifter. So that's a drink holder. And for my stereo system, I finished it up. I've got this will come off with a quick release. I can take it off and it just comes out. I built a support on the bottom of it because with just the top it was going to be too flimsy. So I did that. And then on the back, I put a curved piece of aluminum there which will reflect the sound forward. But it's more of a mud shield from the back side. It'll keep, keep mud from flipping up onto it. And then also today, I made this piece for my cell phone. So I'll hold it within my fingertips. I'll be able to use it and everything. It clears everything. So that was the last thing I did today. So all the important okay there's my brake system laid out on paper and all the parts just came so now we'll get through them and then we're going to start working on the buggy brake system okay today i'm laying out my brakes i got all my hardware in i've got the stainless steel over here on the brakes the banjo fitting uh, the mount's going to go up here we'll get to that in a minute but right now i'm working on my brake and clutch pedals i had to put flexible lines here because my pedals are adjustable I bought everything off Amazon. I was having a hard time finding these and braided. So I just went ahead and got the regular rubber. I am going to put shrink wrap around them because I don't know what kind of UV protection these have around them. Um, I know they're meant for under a car. So just, just to be safe, I'm going to cover them with some shrink wrap to help protect them from the sun. And I'm going to put them all together right here. I, use, I bought these brackets here, um, but I had to modify them for these. These have three quarter openings, the other ones have five eighths. I had to drill drill those out and I just made a simple bracket. I just put all three of them. I left enough space between them so I can get wrenches in there. So that's just gonna get welded right there. That's gonna kinda be the distribution center for the brakes, the starting point. So that's where I'm at right now. Okay, here's where I'm at. I got my bracket in right there and I've got my splitter block. For the front brakes. I will have to put a little short jumper here, which I'm not thrilled about, but I don't have a direct connect to that, so that's why I left a little extra room there for a short jumper. And I moved my horn, my horn bracket was over here, it got in the way, so I moved it over here. So from the pedals to the front brakes, I think I'm in good shape now. And I'm gonna work over here on my front wheel and get the bracket in up here to get the front brakes lined up so that's next okay i took some of my tabs i cut the ears off and i got these brake line connectors that separate two 
and the quarter by 20, they thread right into it perfectly. That threads it down. So I've got two of them in. And I'll go ahead and put a third one in, in the middle. And that'll be the brake and the clutch line will run through there. So that'll keep them nice and secure, nice and neat. So let's get that welded in. Okay, I think I've got all the front end laid out. Come out of the reservoirs there to that junction. That'll be the front brake junction. The tabs, it's gonna to be too hard to weld the tabs in, so what I'm doing, I'm just marking the frame where the tabs will go, so I can do that later. Do the same on both sides. I've got my front brakes mocked up. Checked all the travel on those. Those are good. And then the wires go back. The clutch and brake will go back to the back through those. And there'll be three of those right there. Then I'll run up to the cutting brake. And then the rest will be in the rear. So we're going to jump to that next. All right, I got the rear brakes mocked up now. I've got my tabs in. So there, my banjo is stainless. It's going to run to another flex line up there. You can see both of them up there. So the suspension can go back and forth. And I got the tabs on this side too. I'm going to add a couple more tabs. One there and one there. Just the zip tie tabs when I pull it off. But basically the rear is mocked up and the front's mocked up. Now I just got to make them meet in the middle and I've got to work the emergency brake. Okay, one thing I decided to do with my flexible brake lines since I got the rubber ones on the interior of the car, I got the stainless out at the wheels. But I got some shrink wrap. I got some double thickness so it's nice and thick. It's three quarter inch so it slides around the fittings. That's just going to help, in my opinion, I think it's going to help the sun from the UV rays from getting to the black rubber. Um, so it'll help. And it's also thick so if it does rub wear, it'll wear through this first and I'll be able to see it. And I went with red. Uh, just because black would probably be hotter just to help, maybe help lower the temperature but that's how they're going to look so I got one on there, I'll do all three of those and I've got the one on the in the back there so anyway, it's just extra protection like I say, it'll help me see wear and hopefully it'll make them last longer okay, I'm working on the amount for my emergency brake cable to run through so what I did, I took some one inch eighth wall and a piece of aluminum and I cut it slightly thicker on the opening, which is about five eighths. So it hangs out a little bit on each side. Then I just hammer it flat. When I end up with that expands inside there and gets nice and tight, then I take the bevel and go around it. So that'll let my emergency brake cable pass through that. So let's work on it. Can't do it one-handed. All right, here's what we end up with. Allows it to pass through there. Get a little bit of room if it needs to move back and forth. It'll just kind of keep it out of the way from all the moving parts. So that'll work. Okay, I have my brakes and my emergency brake all mocked up now. Everything's ready. Emergency brake cuts through there. Goes through that hole, jumps over there. And there's the two mounts I made and they'll get cut the length and they'll join up in the junction there and put the box there for the cable Make it work. pull that so that's everything on the back I've got all my tabs tacked in for wiring in for the brake lines there all the way to the front I've got tabs for wiring on the top and the brake lines on the bottom the front brakes, there's everything shrunk wrapped in red. And then over to those tabs, down to the brakes. So everything is mocked up for the brakes now. All the tabs are in place. Um, tomorrow I'm going to go through and start laying out the tabs for the wiring. And then that's going to be it. It's going to be time to break it down and start painting it. So Okay, I think I'm going to wrap up the buggy series with this video. I've done about everything I can do as far as fabrication, so it's just time to tear it down and 
pull all the parts off and paint them and reassemble it. So that's that's kind of boring, really. So I'll make a video as I do that, but I'm not going to release it until it's finished and it'll be part of the finished video. So thanks for watching along with the buggy series. I hope you enjoyed that series. And moving forward, we're going to get over to the Baja. I've been working on the uh, transmission video for the Baja. What I bought, going over what I bought, how much I paid for it, and things I can show you. Um, so that'll be next, and then I'll start working on the Baja. I'm going to mount my transmission, uh, start working on the roll cage, uh, the rear suspension, the rear shocks. So basically everything I've done on the buggy, I'll learn and move on to the Baja. So thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the series, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.